One of my favorite anime films is the 45-minute film Magnetic Rose. It's one of the three shorts found in the 1995 triple billing titled Memories. Magnetic Rose's story is a slick blend of sci-fi and a psychological horror, following two astronauts that discover a mysterious space station filled with classical decor and holograms. They soon learn that the space station was commissioned by a delusional opera diva wishing to re-experience the lost golden years of her life. It's a disturbing, beautiful, and excellently written film that is totally worth your time. I am not going to hold back on spoilers, so I recommend following the link in the description to watch the movie before proceeding with this video. This is the first of two videos I'll make about Magnetic Rose, with this one focusing on the film's use of anti-gravity and the multiplane camera in its storyboarding and animation. One of the most technically striking scenes in Magnetic Rose is the one inside their ship, the Corona, where we see our protagonists mingle in space while floating about. When gravity isn't around to limit the positions and movements of characters, there's no limit for the storyboarding too. We get some really amazing shots that are framed in ways that would be impossible if this scene took place on Earth. There's a lovely cleanness to it all, especially shots involving Ivanov and Aoshima where they fit together like puzzle pieces. The character animation has a field day with anti-gravity too. Personalities and emotions of characters are visualized through the way they interact with their floating environment. Aoshima's cigarette floats out of his mouth when he's shocked, Ivanov splashes alcohol, Heinz slaps Miguel out of frustration, causing him to spin in circles, and Miguel laces about naked. Let's look at the most striking shot in the entire scene, a reverse tracking shot that reveals to us the abnormal architecture of the space station's interior. <laughs> In this sequence, we move through three individual compositions, starting with Heinz leaving the space pod, scaling back to Aoshima upside down on his computer, and ending with a close-up of Ivanov from below. Each of these images are believable on their own, but when combined in a single sequence, our mind is forced to non-verbally reach the conclusion that the space station's interior is unaffected by gravity. This is also a very technically complex shot, one that actually would have been impossible without the advances in computer technology and animation in the 90s. Before computers, this shot would have been created entirely using a multiplane camera. The multiplane camera is a tool popularized by Disney Studios that allows animators to simulate three-dimensional camera movement. It features a handful of shelves to place cells onto. The cells on these shelves can be moved in any direction, so objects in the foreground can move at different speeds than the background. With this, you can create the illusion of three-dimensional camera movement via techniques like parallax scrolling. However, a limitation of the analog multiplane camera is the number of shelves available. From my research, the majority of multiplane cameras featured only four shelves, a foreground, a middle ground, and two layers of background. So let's count how many independently moving layers appear within the shot we're currently analyzing. In the first part, there's the background, and Heinz with the space pod. In the bit with Aoshima, there's Aoshima himself at his computer, the left wall, and the right wall. Finally, Ivanov serves as the frosting on top. That's six independent layers in this one shot. Six is more than four, so how is this accomplished? My theory is that the first bit involving Heinz was filmed on its own, digitally composited, and then superimposed behind the rest of the layers on the multiplane camera. All shots that use computer imagery in some form in magnetic rows have some unfortunate scan lines when analyzed up close, which gives away when the approach is used. Other uses for computers in the film are image distortion and 3D graphics. Anyway, this puts the composited Heinz bit at the bottom layer, leaving three layers for the Aoshima bit. Ivanov's bit at the end likely shares a layer with Aoshima, since all camera movement has ended by the time Ivanov enters the frame. That leaves us with only four layers occupied, an impressive amount of work for a 12 second shot. The multiplane camera provides some of the most interesting shots in magnetic rows, such as when Heinz opens the door to the space station. Another is when Miguel sees Ava through the window. <laughs> 
Rather than pulling the camera backwards or sideways, these shots move the camera in a horizontal arc around the character. The motivation behind this is to slowly reveal a new plot development, after a protagonist discovers it himself. You can even simulate vertical arcs. This one's incredibly subtle, but when Ava stabs Heinz, multiplane techniques are used in the point of view shot of Heinz falling to help separate Ava from the background. So, if we can use a multiplane camera to simulate a camera moving in an arc, can we move in complete circles? Yes, we can. Here, Miguel has inadvertently activated a hologram of a beautiful garden and gazebo, one so beautiful that he forgets it isn't even real. Everything behind Aoshima moves to the right, and everything in front of Aoshima moves to the left. This gives the illusion of us spinning around him as we zoom in for a close-up. This shot is based on one of the most famous and innovative uses of the multiplane camera in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, where the camera spins around the queen as she transforms into the witch. The purpose behind this shot? Immersion. In order to believe that Miguel could mistake a hologram for real life, we need to see how realistic the hologram really is. Moving the camera like this gives us a look into Miguel's surroundings that wouldn't be possible with, from a still background. That shot is contrasted when Heinz discovers where Miguel was trapped inside the hologram. Same technique, but this time showing what Miguel's surroundings was actually like at the time. One more use of the multiplane camera is adjusting the focus. The camera can focus on a frame a certain distance from the camera and switch to a frame of a different distance. My favorite instance of this technique appears in the sequence when Heinz is forced to relive his memory of his daughter falling off of a roof. We look at the roof slowly go out of focus to focus on the silhouetted ground, which gets illuminated by the shadows of Heinz's wife holding her daughter's body. Some of the most impressive shots in the film are the ones that occur in outer space. The space station in the background is rendered in CGI, and stars and space junk fly by in multiplane. Miguel and Heinz's space pod floats around the debris, and as characters deliver dialogue, the pod moves close enough to the camera to see their faces through the window. Magnetic Rose is a masterpiece for many reasons, but its use of the multiplane camera is arguably the most subtle of the lot. It is clear that the animators designed the storyboards for this film with the multiplane camera in mind. 